Hey, this is Brooks from Character Design Forge. If your art or characters are feeling literally flat, here are some tools to flesh them out. Even if your goal is to create characters who are strictly flat on purpose, practicing these things are going to be good ways for you to grow as an artist. A few quick notes. These concepts are going to be familiar for more immediate and advanced artists, but it should help if you're struggling. This is just a supplemental way of thinking to go along with proper study of anatomy and construction, not a replacement. And for more thorough learning along those lines, look for something from me this coming summer. Make sure that you balance what you learn here with lively gesture, personality, movement, and curvature in your drawing and design. Because there's a danger of your work becoming too stiff because you rigidly adhere to what we're going to consider. Our first tool is going to be constructed shapes. Most characters can be broken down and simplified to a point where they are made up entirely of these three 3D shapes, the cube, sphere, and cylinder. You may be familiar with how to represent these shapes as 3D in 2D, the cube, for example, being a grade school tradition alongside this S for many years. The cylinder can be represented by drawing two circles, then connecting them with lines. This is the first place that we can lay down something called contour lines, which helps us understand the shape of a 3D object. If you wanted to be extremely thorough, you could add a ton of these to create an almost wireframe-like cage around your object. This is helpful when we start creating more complex objects as well. Next, the sphere starts as a circle with an additional circular contour line informing you that this is not a disk, but a sphere. And of course, you could add additional contour lines going across the sphere if you'd like. The cube follows the same principles as the cylinder. You can draw two squares and connect them edge to edge with straight lines. If you haven't done so before, I'd recommend that you practice these basic forms because they should be the basic building blocks of your characters. In fact, when we piece all these forms together to create a figure, it's called construction. Our next tool is called foreshortening which consists of how big or small something is in relation to its distance, but it also involves closer shapes overlapping farther ones. This may be a simple concept, but I see a lot of art from beginning artists that throw the illusion by allowing shapes to exist at the same depth despite being in different places. The key thing with fighting the flat is that every part of the drawing needs to reinforce the illusion of depth. If you're drawing a character from the side or a sort of three-quarter view, the arms and legs further from the front are going to be smaller. How extreme the difference in size is, is up to the perspective that you've chosen. And we can't really move any further without talking about perspective. Perspective might be a daunting idea, but you can start slowly by working with what we've already talked about. Now here I'm using the perspective guide that's a built-in tool in the app Procreate, which I'm using. However, you can create your own perspective guide by simply creating a horizontal line wherever you want the horizon to be in your image and then selecting either one point or two points depending on if you want one point or two point perspective that's sort of a subject for another time where all those lines are going to radiate out from so in this image here i have uh, two points that i've selected so that the two point perspective allows me to create boxes on this grid you can use rectangular cubes as bounding boxes, which are simple guides that are basically the perimeter of an object, like your character's hips or pelvis. Then you can add detail to those things later after you've placed them in your scene. Another huge help that sells the illusion of depth is to create a ground plane for your character's feet. If you can establish early in your drawing the placement of your character's feet, you can balance out the weight of the rest of the character from there which helps the believability. So let's put these things into practice. And I don't normally draw characters this way by adding as much as I possibly can to the construction, but I would encourage you to do this at least so that you're pulling some of this information back into the way that you normally draw things. That's what a lot of learning is with art is, especially with, with stylized art, we want to draw things the way that we like to or the in the style that we're comfortable with but it's important to learn things outside of that comfort zone to bring them back and reinforce so that we can improve what we're already making. First, we can sketch out the line of action and a skeleton for our characters, establishing early on that ground plane under our character's feet. 
that square is actually just a small representation of the perspective that we're looking at your art from. So if you need to have other characters or objects in your scene, it's a good idea to carry this perspective over to all of them. Again, we're just thinking along the same lines as that grid we saw earlier. Over top the skeleton, I'm going to use our 3D objects in perspective, using contour lines where applicable. And I kind of went overboard in this demonstration just to really drive home the point. With these cylinders, I established the way that the circles on each end are oriented, thinking about the angles that we see them from. Then I connect the circles. They don't have to be equal on each end. For example, our forearms can be tapered toward the end. This skeleton isn't something you have to draw every time, uh, but it's something that I would highly recommend if you're having trouble with flat artwork. One final bonus tip for you is about cloth. Not necessarily in the way that it wrinkles, but its thickness. Now cloth, no matter how thin it is, has some amount of thickness, and representing that is a good way to show depth and fight the flat in your art. For example, the way that a sleeve or collar wraps around the cylinder of the neck or the wrist or the cuff of a pant leg, make sure that you're showing a transition between the end of the garment and the next object, instead of just drawing a line through the existing character silhouette. Unless you're trying to show that this is really skin-tight cloth, in which case you might want to show that the skin outside of the garment is actually sort of tapering back out because it's not being restricted by the cloth. I hope this was helpful for you. Let me know if you'd like me to mix in a few more videos on the basics like this. If you'd like to support the channel, you can head to patreon.com slash bageldenizen. And bageldenizen is my username on Twitter, Instagram, and Twitch as well. I'm making two new videos a week here on Character Design Forge. Subscribe on YouTube so that you know when new ones are made available. Thank you for watching, and have fun creating.